Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here and this unboxing comes from Bugs in Cyberspace. Peter was very kind to send these to me. A lot of my bugs come from Peter. Some of my ivory millipedes, my biggest Spirostreptus millipede, my Quahuila devil scorpion, some of my isopods, my first blue death feigning beetle, quite a few. I've always had good experience with Peter and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to get some bugs or bug supplies from Peter. Now, I can collect velvet ants in my area, but I haven't had much luck lately. And I'll keep looking because I can always add a few more to the community. There's our cold pack. Um, but I was very excited. Peter can get some kinds of velvet ants that I can't get in my area. He goes can collect them from some pretty interesting places. And here, wow. Woohoo! I'm not sure how many containers there are in here. I'm going to take a look. But you can see there's one at least right there. Very nice. Oh, it's a nice big one too. I think that one's a little bigger than uh, my largest of the last group of velvet ants that I had. Let me just double check and make sure. They're probably all in the same container, but you always want to check and make sure. So, yeah, they're probably all in here. And as you note here, it says they sting. Important. They do actually have quite a powerful sting, and though they're not aggressive, they're not really a pet for handling. So, let's get these into their enclosure. So, in the past, I've given my velvet ants homemade bug jelly, which they... Um, except readily. I've also given them soft juicy fruits again accepted readily and I have given them diluted honey but uh, not too long ago I thought it might be a good idea to try and offer them some diluted honey in some ant feeders. These are these bases are 3d printed so they have nice little wells here from which ants can drink um, either sugar water or honey water or other homemade nectars. And so I thought it would be a really good idea uh, to try these out with the velvet ants because the beetles would uh, walk in the honey water and that didn't work out very well because the beetles would get sticky and that probably stressed them out a little bit. Something like this is made not to leak. I love this packing by the way, it's pretty amazing. It's made not to leak and I can fill one with just water and so when the velvet ants are thirsty they can drink from from here hopefully. Hopefully it'll work for them and then I can have another one to provide them with energy based on the uh, sugar water or honey water that I offer them. So I'm excited to try these out. Let's see how they work. I want to make sure the velvet ants can hydrate right after their trip, so I'll temporarily remove some of the decor here and place the ant feeders. This one just has water in it. And then this one here has a nectar solution made of both honey and sugar mixed with water. So they can both hydrate and get some carbohydrates. As you can see, I've got several species of desert tenebrionid beetles here in the enclosure. Velvet ants do really well in a communal setup with beetles like these. If you want to learn a little bit more about that, I do have a video. Check out the card and uh, you can watch that video that explains a little bit more about that. I'll also have links in the description to these two ant feeders that I'm going to try out. If you want to check out, learn a little bit more about them, as well as to my do-it-yourself bug jelly recipe that I use to feed to my beetles and my velvet ants and some other links that are relevant. So here we go. I'm going to put in the velvet ants. Oh, I can see two. I'm being careful not to upset anybody. You know, I've never purposely free handled velvet ants, but on occasion I have had them crawl onto me when I'm got my hands in the enclosure doing things and uh, never, I have not been stung during that activity 
when I was a, a child, I did get stung because I was uh, handling velvet ants without really knowing what I was doing. I didn't really know what I was looking at. So that didn't go very well, but it, it was a pretty intense experience and I remembered it ever since. Okay, so there's one right there. Let's see if we can get that out. That is such a beautiful creature. Oh, I was hoping for one of these. Thank you, Peter. This species, this very fuzzy white one, is called Dasimutilla gloriosa. And unlike the uh, very common red and orange species, this, this white species is not um, displaying a posematic coloration, which is warding off predators by letting them know, you know, I sting or whatever, or I taste bad. Um, it is actually mimicking the seed pods, the fuzzy seed pods of the creosote bush, which I think is really fascinating. They, they tend to live in areas where the creosote bush uh, grows. And so they've got this fabulous uh, mimicry going on of the, the plant part. I think that's amazing. So let's just take a look at these guys settling in. I shouldn't call them guys because I know that these are all females because uh, velvet ants are, are quite um, sexually dimorphic. The females don't have wings and the males do. And there are other uh, visible differences as well. But see, this is one of the reasons I love velvet ants. They are so active. Oh, that, look how big that one is on the right there, right in front of the feeder. They just instantly go to exploring. So it looks like the largest one has got kind of an orangey color to it. The smaller dark one is, is a very reddish color. I like that. And then we've got the, the fuzzy one, the Desimutilla Gloriosa. These are amazing. Thank you so much, Peter. I really, really appreciate it. I'm excited to finally have velvet ants again. It's been a while. Been since uh, January, I think. Um, these can live a couple of years in captivity, so I hope to have these for a while. Unfortunately, they do not breed in captivity because they, as larval, uh, in the larval stage, they are parasites of ground nesting wasps and bees, and so that's very hard to replicate in captivity. But that is about the only downside to these guys, well, you know, besides the sting and so on. So I'm going to be making a video that more specifically focuses on the care of velvet ants pretty soon. But for now, I'm just going to watch these little guys, or these little velvet ants settle in. Thanks again, Peter. And thank you for watching. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to rate, share, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.